In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to do dilution calculations. When you dilute a solution, you take a small portion of a concentrated solution and then you add water or whatever solvent you have to it to make it up to a final volume. Notice that you take out a certain amount of solute out of one container and you put it in another container and you add Lip, you add a volume to it. The amount of solute that you start with does not change at the end of your, your uh, dilution. So because the amount of solute does not change and only the volume increases, we can use the equation C1V1 equals C2V2. C1V1 is equal to C2V2. And we can compare the concentrated to the dilute state. C is equal to concentration. It doesn't matter what concentration units that you use. And V is equal to volume. You just have to make sure that your initial and your final volumes are in the same unit. One means the initial concentrated solution and two means the final dilute solution. When you're doing these calculations, it first involves determining the values given. Is it initial or is it final? A way to help you to remember or to think about what you're given is that your initial concentration is always going to be greater than your final concentration because you're diluting it, right? Concentrate to dilute. Your initial volume is always going to be smaller than your final volume. So, because you're adding more liquid to dilute. So, C1 is always greater than C2, and V1 is always less than V2. And that'll help you figure out what you're given in a problem. Let's take a look. Let's solve these problems. How much of a 15.0 molar stock solution do you need to prepare 250 milliliters of a 2.5 molar HF solution? Well, let's take a look at the numbers that we're given. We're given, oops, we're given, <clears throat> 15.0 molar, 250 milliliters, and 2.35 molar. Based on what we, we said before, C1 is always going to be more concentrated than, than C2. So which of these values, 15.0 or 2.35, is going to be C1? Right, 15.0. C2 is going to be that 2.35 molar. We're only given one volume. So it says, how much do you need to prepare 250 milliliters of a 2.35 molar solution? So that 250 milliliters, that 250 milliliters is related to this solution. So that 250 milliliters is going to be our V2. So we don't know what V1 is, but we do know what V2 is, and that's 250 milliliters. Does that make sense? Because it says how much of this stock solution. So we don't know how much is in our concentrated solution. All right, so C1V1 is equal to C2V2, and we are solving for V1. If you need um, help rearranging equations, please see one of my previous videos on how to rearrange equations. And we end up with C2, V2, divided by C1. And this is going to be 2.35 molar times 250 milliliters, all divided by 15.0 molar. And we're going to end up with 39.16. And if we consider our sig figs, we only have two of them. We're going to have 39 milliliters. Let's check to make sure that this makes sense. V1 should be less than V2. Yep, V1 is 39 milliliters, whereas V2 is 250 milliliters. So we solved this correctly. Let's take a look at the next problem. If I have 340 milliliters of a 0.5 molar NABR solution, what will, be, what will the concentration be if I add 560 milliliters more water to it? Let's, let's break this problem.
them down. Let's take a look at all the numbers that we're given. We're given 350 milliliters, we're given 0.5 molar, and we're given 560 milliliters. Okay, so let's take a look at what this problem is saying. 350 milliliters is right next to 0.5 molar. So that means that that concentration and that volume go together. Um, how do I know whether it's the concentrated or not? Well, let's take a look at this other volume that we're given. We're given 560 milliliters, but that's not exactly V2 either. Um, but it says I have 350 milliliters, and that's what I'm starting with. So if I say C1 is the 0.5 molar, and V1 is that 340 milliliters, the question is asking, what is the new concentration? So what is C2? We don't know. And B2, first guess you might say is 560 milliliters, but it's not. 560 milliliters will be added to the original amount. So V2 is going to be 560 plus 340. Did I write that right? Nope. 340, 340 milliliters, and that gives us 900 milliliters. So now we're solving for C2, C1, V1 is equal to C2, D2, C2 is equal to C1, V1, all divided by V2. So now we plug in Chuck, we just put in our values. 0 0.5 molar times 340 milliliters, all divided by 900 milliliters, and we get 0 0.1888. If we take a look at the number of sig figs that we need to have, we should have one sig fig, so this is 0 0.2 molar. Does this make sense? Our concentrated amount was 0 0.5 molar and our dilute amount is 0 0.2 molar. That is correct. Our starting volume is lower than our final volume and our starting concentration is low is more than our final concentration. Let's try one that's a little trickier. This one is a little tricky. It's got a lot of words in it. So let's, let's break it down. A child requires 75 milligrams of a medication that is stored in ampules or little tubes of 500 milligrams in a total of 300, in, in a, excuse me, in a total of 3.0 milliliters. What volume of stock can be diluted to make a solution that can provide the required dosage in one milliliter. What? Let's think about what we're given. What is the order? Well, the order says that I need 75 milligrams, right? And the question says that I want to be able to provide that 75 milligrams in one single dose of one milliliters, right? So we can say that that is our concentration because remember it says this is stock, this is my stock, 500 milligrams in three mils, and I want to dilute it to one milliliter. So my dilution situation, V2 is one milliliter and the concentration is 75 milligrams per milliliter. All right, what is available in, in house? 500 milligrams per three milliliters. That is gonna be our C1, right? So how many milliliters of stock? Well, that's gonna be V1 because I wanna know how much can I take out of that ampule and dilute it so that I can draw up easily one milliliters to give to this patient. Because if we take a look at it, we actually do the, the, the calculations, it's a really small amount, right? So let's take a look. We've got C1, V1 is equal to C2, V2. And we are looking for, we're looking for V1. So we want to know 
what is V1, C2, V2, all divided by C1, and get we get 75 milligrams per milliliter times one milliliter divided by 500 milligrams per three milliliters and that will be 0.05 milliliters. So you would take 0.05 milliliters and dilute it so the answer is 0.05 milliliters and the way that you would prepare the solution is to measure out 0.05 milliliters and dilute it up to one milliliter. There are actual um, tools that you can use to measure such small volumes, they're called micropipettes. All right, this is a sample dosing calculation. It's kind of like a dilution, but not exactly. Um, so it's more of um, using conversion factors to find your, to find your answer. So a doctor orders a patient to be given 0.25 grams of streptomycin. How many milliliters of the stock solution will be given? If we have available a vial of streptomycin powder that has been reconstituted with two nine milliliters of sterile water for a concentration of 400 milligrams per mil. So what is the order? The doctor has ordered that we need to give the patient 0.25 grams. What do we have available? What we have available is 400 milligrams per milliliter. Not this 9.5 mils. Not this 9.5 mils that we see here. That's just extra information to mix you up, right? So the concentration is 400 milligrams per two mils. How many milliliters will be administered? So we want to know how many milliliters. Um, you always start with the amount that you're given. So we need to 0.25 grams. And my solution is in 400 milligrams per milliliter. So I've got to convert my 25 grams. I've got to convert that to... Um, I've got to convert that to milligrams. So 10 to the 3 milligrams is equal to 1 gram. And those grams will cancel out. And now I can use my concentration, 2 milliliters on top, because I need to cancel out those 400 milligrams on the bottom. So I've got uh, my milligrams cancel out. And now we end up with 1.25 and we have to have two sick figs, so 1.3 milliliters is what we've been given to the child. You're going to try this example on your own. Let's read it together. A child requires 225 milligrams of a medication that is stored in ampules of 300 milligrams and 2 milliliters. How many milliliters will be drawn to give the child? Pause the video, solve the problem, and we'll come back and give you the answer. Okay, so let's check your work. What is the order? 225 milligrams. And what do we have available? 300 milligrams per two milliliters. And we need to know how many milliliters will be administered. Well, the number of milliliters is gonna be equal to, we start off with the 225 milligrams times our concentration with milligrams on the bottom, milliliters on the top, and we end up with 1.5 milliliters.